Hey guys, welcome to my channel once again. Yeah, it's your baby girl BJ BJ. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to my channel once again. My name is Balaji. Balaji, 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 Balaji. Okay, so um, if you're new to the channel, I love to create content about God, lifestyle, gratitude, and every other thing that tickles my fancy. Um, in this video, I'll be telling you guys about how I met my husband. <laughs> okay, nothing fancy, nothing outside the normal, just some great move of faith. Um, I just realized that um, by this weekend. It's going to be one year since we had our introduction, our Zoom introduction. I mean, time flies. The reality dawned on me. I'm like, have I been talking to this guy every day for the past one year? Like, does it look real? <laughs> okay, so contrary to what people thought, um, that my husband and I were probably in a relationship before I relocated, but... I mean, <laughs> I'll insert a video at my bridal shower when they asked me, like, how did I meet my husband? Okay, where was our first date? And I'm like, it was on WhatsApp. And somebody was like, WhatsApp? Don't worry, I'll insert the video so that you can see by yourself. First date? On WhatsApp. On okay, it WhatsApp. <laughs> ah, first date on WhatsApp. They were WhatsApp. They were WhatsApp. So, like she legit thought that my husband and I were dating before I relocated and then I just came home for the wedding but sadly that was not the story so I'll just tell us a story today story time yeah please grab your popcorn <laughs> okay so um the time I relocated I mean I was single pringle pringle and not even ready to mingle so, um, fine, my husband and I went to the same university and uh, we attended the same fellowship in school, RCF, and then uh, was a brother to me, I was a sister to him. There wasn't anything outside, nothing, nothing, we we're just brother and sister just doing stuff in fellowship and that was all I could remember about him, like personally. On his own end, he had always had an eye for me, but me, I did not know. <laughs> My roommate in school that time used to tell me that me, I know it's me anything. <laughs> if you do not open your mouth and tell me your intentions, oh my, you're your own. No. <laughs> you're your own. No. You're just longing things for yourself. Because me, I have not know what happened. Um, so that was us. The us that I remember back then. After school, he went his way. I went my way. We went to save. But we still kept in touch. He used to call me then just to keep touch. And I had this um, recharge card business I was doing then. So it used to patronize us to that time. And then sometimes they give us tip like uh, keep the change and like ah oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm very grateful. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. At that time when my husband, of course it wasn't my husband then. When he called me, like he's one of the people that will call me that, and I know what the next question is. You ask me how am I? How is work? How is can you come? How is mommy? How is daddy? <laughs> In my mind, I was always like, who is this person that is always asking after mommy and daddy like this? <laughs> I did not know it soon that God had interest for me. Husband man had interest. So, but um, that was just it. It was in a relationship. I was in a relationship as well. But, um, um, now this is not really exciting part. Sadly, the guy I was in a relationship with passed away some really sad stuff <laughs> that was about one of the most trying times of my life like it still feels like it's not true it still feels like did it really happen i loved him i really really loved him and um it made me see love in a different perspective it made me appreciate love it made me appreciate being in a relationship his family is an amazing family. They did come to the wedding. We talk from time to time. I'm literally their last born. 
and he had cancer a young lad i think he died at 27 a young business minded lad and he's just one amazing person or it was just one amazing person and <laughs> so sha he died just a couple of months before i relocated it eats me like it eats me like it eats me <laughs> ah but you know so that was the notes with which i relocated like i was very single i wasn't even ready to even mingle with anybody i just wanted to heal like i wanted to get over everything that had happened i had fears i had concerns i i was just not in a good place i was like why would this happen like, there were just lots of things but, ah oh, it was hard though it was hard that was just the long and short of it so i shall relocate that months after i mean this was a guy that the whole relocation process we're planning it together I remember when I filled my first house and we had to prepare for another one. We were literally preparing for IELTS together before the sickness became out of hand and we started going from hospital to hospital and I was stressed. I mean, writing my second IELTS, I had no clue I was going to pass because we were juggling hospital, not knowing what it was. I'm a nurse. I studied to be a nurse i practiced nursing but i mean when it was in the midst of all of those things i realized that <laughs> there are some things that would happen to people so dear to you that even your being a nurse would not do anything <sighs> so it's really hard so it's hard seeing a loved one in pain and you can't do anything we didn't know what it was for all the time we were moving from hospital to hospital until he passed away and a day after he passed away was when the, we got the results the test results that made us know that it was cancer just stage four cancer i mean it had gone really deep like but yeah we're grateful to god that everything that happened happened and thank god i will praise you on the mountain i will praise you when the mountains in my way you're the summit where my feet lie i will praise you in the valleys of the sea no less god within the shadows no less faithful when the light leads me astray thank you lord jesus thank you thank you lord jesus for everything okay so guys I need to get back um so that was it and then um what happened again i relocated but i think at some points between when he passed on and when i relocated you know this anonymous game <laughs> it was um trending that time more like write you you post this link for your friends and then more like write an anonymous message i won't know you were the one that wrote it and so i just had that on my whatsapp status for a while and lo and behold i got this i got a couple of comments but one of them was somebody some random guy that i don't know <laughs> the guy was like that oh yeah that um i'll post it more like the person has been trying to figure out how the two of us would spend the rest of our lives together and does not know how and <laughs> right on my status that day i think my comment was eh ah, oh yeah shoot your shots now <laughs> just that i am not ready yet i need to heal first that was my comment and so just a pastime and that was all and then i got relocating and the realities of the abroad don't know me there was the loneliness of being abroad 
there was you know that moment you were planning something with someone you love and then suddenly the person is no more there were times that i would just sit in my room and cry there were times that genuine friends were concerned and like more like fine that these are things that we don't want to talk about like you literally just move on past it like not it it happened but the way people do react to grief differs and well there was a friend of mine that was legit concerned i was like fine i may not say these things how but he knows that deep within there's going to be the concern of like we are even going to start making the friends from back home i mean you had lots of your schoolmates you had lots of people that you can you can just start a relationship and but here that you had now like we are even the people which dates do you want to go so all those concerns with, even when i do not want to think it sometimes you have people that would also be thinking it for you that kind of thing shabu. some months later like i was just probably talking to god not talking to god the way everything happened then i could i would just say like it was god you know what like when you think about everything like just the submission of everything the same way i've just narrated everything to you guys now just thought about it and you're like ah, so what's like now like ah, in everything we give thanks money all i know is that i'm not at a disadvantage god is going to have his way of working things out and i just turned everything over to god basically because i cannot even come and stress myself and come and enjoy myself and there was this guy i had then that was a friend and he probably just got in touch with me one day and probably wanted to shoot his shot and he was like how ah, will they find girl like me not be in a relationship and all and then i told him that ah the guy passed on and that was it so he found it shocking to believe like i mean it's a shocking news and i think that had a way of reducing chances with prospective people too but i don't know i just didn't want to think about it so I think it was just the summation of everything that probably just got me thinking and talking to God that day. I was like, oh God, like, is this the way I'll be at a disadvantage? Is this the way, like, guys would think that whatever, whatever happened? Well, I did not shall think about it long and short. I just handed everything over to God. Then fast forward to, I think, January last year. Um, was it even January? January, February then my husband ayobami we got to, he, he was checking up on me again like his many times of checking up and prior to when i traveled i think that um period between i think the guy passed on in july late july between july and october when i relocated my husband wanted us to see then but then I was really busy at work and we couldn't get to facilitate a visit. So I couldn't see him before we traveled, literally. The last time I saw him was going to be when we graduated and that was in 2016. It's just been phone calls and phone calls and phone calls up until 2020. So we got talking and to think of it, I, I can't really remember how we actually started all this. Out. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> so like we um one of those times i was stressed at work or something you know this song by tatiana baby you are strong you are wise you are about to hear the thousand reasons why la, 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 la. that song sha i posted my picture and i put the lyrics of that song more like so um, you know you have to just encourage yourself again and motivate yourself again that kind of thing some reassurance so my husband saw it and it, it was in the choir unit it sings beautifully well it was in the choir unit when we were in school so when he saw the post it was like that ah, and then he wants to sing the song for me and i'm like yeah sing the song now nah. was my own <laughs> i was like okay i'll be waiting for it so he didn't remember to sing the song for a while so days after i was like oh he's been very busy but he still promises me that i will sing the song but i mean it wasn't like it was so much or something exciting for me to look forward to per se i just but i mean i would also appreciate it so eventually sent in the song and when the man sent in the song i mean it was nice to listen to a guy sang for me and after singing the song you know i did extra songs again extra extra love songs ah. <laughs> in my mind after i listened to it i was like ah, is this the way this brother used to sing love songs for people up and down <laughs> 
<laughs> like it's one song you say you want to sing for me now which one is all this additional extra extra ones but i not see anything that was in my mind i still went to email I was like, oh thank you very much some some something some some time we ended the conversation there and after then he now came again and he was like ah, he has a confession to make oh. like he has something to tell me and i was like okay no problem i'll be waiting for it and then the shark came and then she sent that voice note of course it started with how are you how is family how is work how is clinical i shall answer everything and then it got to the confession part i wish i still had that voice note <laughs> and then she went on and can she said it almost somehow and then she ended up like can i remember one anonymous message like that that was the one that sent it i'm like anonymous message i was like which one I had to go and look for this screenshot that was it you that sent this message that you are trying to figure out how we spend the rest of our life together he said yes i said what was my response he said what i said that day was you shall allow me to heal first and i was like ah, this boy is right <laughs> ah that was what happened like so it was you <laughs> serious i was like so it was you <laughs> and i was like okay now it's getting interesting i mean at that time it was a brother in rcf that i knew there wasn't any higher tell of a date or getting to know each other or like we were as platonic as possible like that you can think of nothing nothing anywhere that was when I just started thinking that oh really okay now that's some great stuff anyway like okay like I did not I never even talked to him for a long time after that confession then he came again and we got talking and just everyday conversations and he went on to still reinstate that I was still very much serious about what he said at that time and all of that and in my mind I was like how is that even going to work at that point i felt like oh maybe if we had probably gone on that date that he invited me for before i traveled maybe it would still make some sense but unfortunately we didn't have that date so it was like okay let's see how it goes and we just left it like if it was going to work it would work and if it would not work and also at that time i also had concerns because i mean there was this thing trending on um on twitter at that time about how people were taking advantage of nurses that relocated more like your visa the visa you get allows you to relocate with your immediate family your dependents and that's your husband and your children so you have people running things that they will even tell you let's just get married if it doesn't work we'll divorce and I couldn't even tell people at that time I relocated that the visa I had was such that I could use it to bring my husband in because I'm like before somebody will come and take advantage of me and use my visa to enter Ubudo Yimbo and then we'll now begin to see stories that touch the earth. So like those were one of my concerns. Like I just I just had this wall like for any Nigerian <laughs> or somebody i did not know i didn't know how god was going to do it and all of that that was one of my concerns but when my husband and i got talking about it eventually i mentioned that my concern to him and unfortunately he didn't even know that there was something like that so it came to him as a shock as a rude shock more like why would i even think that low on him and everything but i had to make him understand that i did not mean to but that's just the situation and that's been something i've been quite weary and conscious of so more like after he made me see that oh he's not after that then we shall have began to talk and so there were times that would drop back just the reality of how would you even start a relationship with someone that's been five years since you last saw him and all but long and short in all of these things eh what i'll just say is when the things began to unfold there was a place of god for me and i knew that it was something god wanted me to do that time because 
even when things began to when things began to unfold and i'm like no 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 that's when god brings to remembrance something he has once said to me like regarding the subject and when it comes to mind i'll be like oh god was that what you meant at that time and then i'll be like ah ah okay you know that kind of thing and it literally was like fulfillment of what god had said earlier but it was just a tiny piece of what god had said in the midst of this man is more than four thousand miles away from me the last time we saw was five years ago like is this even real can it happen how are we going to do it and a million other impossibilities spoke to friends about it and everybody had this had one concern or the other i mean they were valid and legit concerns so you get what i mean but in Hosha and on his own end too he also had his own convictions too or things that made him feel like okay he could actually do this at this time and he was happy to go on and the rest is history <laughs> so we literally just picked it up from there and we got talking it was a long distance relationship we started long distance obviously so he asked me how's long distance i told him yes long distance i gave him some time i gave it some time to be sure it's something i wanted to do and we got talking so it's mostly video calls and voice calls and he was in the know about me i was in the know about him and we just went on and on like that and we're looking forward to meeting each other and yeah i, I even I, I remember that when we got dating like when it became serious i had to start planning a trip to come to nigeria to like let me even meet this guy and let's see if if like let's let's meet physically as lovers and not just the mindset of what we've had about each other five years ago but unfortunately there was coronavirus pandemic there was international ban i couldn't travel anywhere i had to just be here and nobody knew what the situation of things was going to be and also at that time i think we just considered how about him going to meet my family how about families meeting and in all of those things i would just say what kept me going was the backing of god i mean the backing of god for me was as tiny as this or as it was very little like very very little i just had to trust god like god just kept letting me know that things was going to work out and I, all i needed to do was just to trust him if i tell you that it was easy to trust i would be lying to you it wasn't easy at all at all at all at all like there was a place of what if what i think he is or who i thought he was is not what he is there are things that you get to know about your partner when you go on physical dates when you see each other when you you're around each other but here are we that all we have is telephone conversations like how am i so sure about this how am i so sure about that what if i get to meet this guy and i don't even i can't deal with him and all of that but when all those worries come god is going to remind me of what he has said about this subject matter because he had said to me long before i started thinking of marriage that this is how and how the brother is going to come like this is how and how it's going to happen so i just knew that like for a long time that the picture was more like the guy is going to be that is going to be someone that's a long distance scenario but when we eventually get to meet we will click like we will click <laughs> so when it happened long distance and it was like okay it was like oh god was that what you meant i just held on to that little thing that little thing that very little thing it got even more challenging when we had to take the step to do the zoom introduction i was happy to go and he was happy to go on it used to bother him a lot when i when i tend to draw back sometimes and i just get weary and like what else do i want me self i asked myself that what else do i want <laughs> and even god said will ask me again that what else do you want me to tell you you this daughter of mine <laughs> so like it got to that point where i just had to let go and let god so let's go and let god and just trusted god 
and we had the zoom introduction and we started preparing for the wedding all of these things it was still based on all these things i've told you guys like i've not removed anything or added anything to this and i was to meet him in april april was approaching that was like a month to our wedding flight was booked and that was the first time we were going to be meeting we had a wedding planned already guys you don't know how scared anxious nervous worried i was waiting for my travel dates some days ago was 26 and the date 26 just kept popping into my eye and i'm like why is this date popping into my eye and then it occurred to me how much i was looking forward to 26 i was used to fly on the 26th of april my flight was for that day so like i had to book everything around it my covid test and all of that and i knew a lot of things depending on that i'm also missing my fiance for the first time like what would it be like would we be happy to still carry on with the wedding in two weeks time or would we be disappointed like we had lots of things on our minds but to the glory of god it was just as God had said it. Like we met and oh my god, we clicked. <laughs> you would think that when we met, we probably had seen each other, we've been dating for a long time, and then we traveled and we went apart. But I mean everything started long distance. Today, yeah, we have we're celebrating one month one year of um of our Zoom introduction and it's well over one year of starting the relationship it was long distance relationship and for every long distance relationship they usually say that there is no point in you elongating it unnecessarily more like the couple has to work towards coming together as soon as they are able to come together that was it for us and it's been one year of having the zoom introduction it's been a couple of months of hey sorry guys my setup fell down and everything Africa. <laughs> because i'm even hungry myself now so i need to start preparing something i'll just finish it all the story now so long and short that was the way we shall go or we got together and we got married and here we are today i cast my mind back at the way everything happened and in all sincerity i am very very grateful to god that i i gave the chance of let me give it a try and not by the world standard of uh mashe or mashe or you know all those kind of things but today is graceful i'm grateful and i'm just very happy that we gave it a try so long and short of this video that's literally her love story like how we got married long distance and here we are now <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful every day living with him in this house i wish he was here but I love that man. I love him so much. <laughs> um, so literally, I don't know if this video is going to encourage anybody, but we can decide to allow God, let go and allow God to make use of awkward situations for his glory, to bring a message out of the mess, to make something beautiful out of everything that might be in your life right now. Never say never basically like and all of these things still comes down to having a relationship with god the bible says that a child is not going to ask his father for bread for fish and then the father will give the um child snake to eat if our earthly fathers would not do that what do you think our heavenly father is going to do he cares so much about us he's is my is so mindful of us and he, we are not at a, at a disadvantage as children of God. So literally, it comes down to having a relationship with God. I mean, if I did not have a relationship with God, there wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been the place of God saying some things to me in the past that were more like remembrance now. And then I just knew that oh, this is God. So it's more like fulfillment of promises of prophecies that had already gone ahead. Do you get what I mean? So. I just knew that it was God and I gave it a try and here we are now. 
so if you don't have a relationship with god i'll just encourage you like give god a chance <laughs> it's the best thing that can happen to anybody just he desires a relationship with you he desires to talk to you he desires he wants to know more about you it, it, i mean he knows everything already but he wants to be in the know he wants you to let him into your life you get that you get that kind of thing to so just the bible says that you believe in your heart and then you confess jesus as your lord and your savior he does not want to be the lord he doesn't want to be the savior he wants to be your own lord and your own savior to so just give god that chance let's go and let god and you would see that it actually pays to serve Jesus. It pays, it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my heart. Okay, so literally, that's it, Sha. Um, that's how I, how I made my husband do. That's how I made my husband. And that's how I started it. So all of you that are thinking that these people, they are always boboing us. They are not boboing you. We started our love on WhatsApp. <laughs> we started our love on what? On WhatsApp. Okay, so you'll see me my, again in my next video. I remain your darling, no more picture. Remain in God and God bless you. Bye.